What's up guys, welcome back to some more Atlas news. There is a Pirate Day Q&A, or Ask a Pirate Day Q&A, which is the Q&A with the devs. And uh, it's quite a long one, so it might be a long video, but let's get on with it. Ahoy Pathfinders, there will be no patch this week, so instead we're delivering some information based on some questions we've collected and seen around the community. Since we announced a renewed Atlas journey last summer, a lot of things have changed in the development cycle. We are still working on improving our processes and the feedback loop with the community as well. Like in any adventure, some parts of the journey can be rough, but as we overcome them, we continue to move forward and build on our experiences. Whether we are making small steps or revisiting old ideas, it is important to remember that we are still sailing forward. Development is very often not linear, and understandably, things can get confusing for the community, even for those seasoned Pathfinders who have been sailing the seas of Atlas since the very beginning. We hope that today's discussion and some of the answers to your questions will help the community understand our vision for Atlas and where we are currently at. Atlas in general is lacking a strong theme. Yes, we are a pirate game, but it is certainly a mishmash of a bunch of different stuff. And we are looking to address that post the release of the current feature slate, trade system, new ships and claim system. Right now the idea we are liking most is something we're calling Stormpunk, which centers around the idea that there are more resources to capture on the water, like harnessing lightning. We are going to maintain an element of fantasy moving forward, but it may not be so openly Dungeons and Dragons or high fantasy feeling. As with all things, everything will remain as we introduce new things and we will fade things that people lose interest in. So just quickly, like I said, I don't want to make this video too long, but that's interesting that they've mentioned the fantasy stuff again and they don't want to now lose all types of fantasy. They, they want to maintain an element of fantasy going forward when previously they've said they basically want to move away from it altogether. Um, so now they seem to be, you know, keeping some of that on board and uh, that obviously gives them some creative leeway in many places. Um, so that'll be interesting to see what comes of that. Like I said, we'll have to see how it goes. What is the long term plan or overall vision? It'd help explain a lot of these changes if we were also privy to just a rough idea what long term will look like because right now it seems things are going a bit backwards in regards to accessibility, especially for small groups and solo players. So that's the first question. Um, I'll read the question and then I'll tell you the dev's response to keep it clear if you're just listening and not watching. Um, so this was their response. At the highest level, the goals are as follows. One, get players out on the ocean. There are lots of things we're doing to encourage this, but it basically means that we want players spending more time at sea and less time on land. In order to do that, we really have to blow out all the things you can do at sea so they are as fun and interesting as what you do on land. Two, make ship-to-ship -ship combat fun. There is so much to this, but we really want PvP interactions on the water to be richly rewarding. 3. Increase player recuperation. Survival games can be tough and we want to make sure that players can be devastating to one another, but that the losing side player doesn't have to feel like they are starting over each time. We also want to make small companies and lone wolves more viable. That's very interesting because it's quite a common thing and I, I think there's a lot more solo players and a lot more smaller companies than people believe and so it kind of makes sense to do that but personally as much i'm in that group i would say i'm in like the small company kind of portion there they they have to be careful with that because they don't want to go balance in the game for small companies and lone players because obviously then it will make things easier for large companies so that'll be interesting how that, that plays out um Obviously, I'm for making it more playable for people in my situation, but at the same time, you know, certain things need to be left difficult because, like I said, it'll make things too easy otherwise uh, at the other end of the scale for big companies. We still have a ways to go before we reach these goals. We know that we are not there yet, 
and the, the current state of Atlas does not reflect what we envision. Most of what we have implemented so far is still in its beginning stages and are only just setting the foundation for how the gameplay is going to evolve. Trade system. For instance, one of the main goals of the train system is to increase play at the smaller group and solo level. We recognize that right now the system is not very friendly to these players. There's a lot of balance to be done there and a number of missing elements like the upcoming trade wins feature, but we are working on it. Ultimately, when all pieces are in place, we are planning for a system where large companies will actually be incentivized on a different scale for helping small companies and solos. The trade system is still in its alpha stage and as of build 515.17, all trade shipments are virtual and locked in a single grid. We are continuously working on market optimizations as well as bug fixes and server side improvements to bring the system to full functionality. Subsequent patches should see more refinement to the trade system, opening up more routes and eventually the NPC trade ships. Please note that at this stage, we may have to disable and re-enable trade sometimes to work out and troubleshoot any issues that may potentially arise. Next question is, what about the players that do not wish to utilize the market system? Aside from the market, are there any other big gold earners in the planning besides maps and whales and sunken treasures? And the dev responded with, although the trade system is meant to be one of the core pillars of gameplay, our main goal is that gold comes from the sea. So yes, you'll see some additions and refinements to life on the ocean, which should make getting gold easier for non-marketplace participants. Claim systems. We are looking into rebooting the original claim system that allow players to take over a section of the island. This is done by placing down a claim structure that takes longer to build and is more robust than a claim system than a claim flag, sorry. It may also have its own defenses. Once fully built, it will have to be destroyed for you to lose your claim and everything that goes along with it. We are not completely reverting back to the old claim system but we'll be taking the original concept and building off of it. We are currently still testing some ideas. Um, yeah, so guys, like I said at the start, this is really long, this post, and there's a lot of things I'd love to talk about. So what I'll probably do is do other videos on particular things within this post, one of them being the claim system, because it's very interesting. I really liked the original claim system. Um, there was a lot wrong with it, but there was a lot right with it. I really liked the you know claiming land instead of an island um, and I do think that's a great thing for them to build on so that'd be really really interesting that's all I'll say for now on that matter but um, yeah that that's actually really promising in my eyes and as always guys I'd love to know what you guys think or anything on here but in particular the claim system ship systems getting a new ship system into the game that can support future expansions does take a bit more time than just putting out a new <laughs> one of the existing system and we're excited to be getting closer to it. We teased the first one, the ramming ship, a few weeks ago and we have a number of other ideas for these unique and specialised ships but we don't want to spoil the surprise completely. The important note here is that we are moving from releasing ship parts to releasing complete ships that have special roles in the game and thus begin to grow the strategy of managing a fleet. All of the upcoming ships that can be bought with gold will be primitive class and up. Ramshackles will still be available at free ports now, but when you buy things with gold, they will be good ships. And so the next question is, in regards to the existing ship system, can we get tokens as random loot drops from bosses to craft schooners, brigs, galleons, please? So there is a route for smaller groups to get boats. And the devs responded, this probably won't happen. Right now, we're really happy with how hard it is to get bigger ships. Many players have reported having more fun than ever with the Sloop Wars. Dropping tokens would benefit large companies more and go against what we are trying to do, which is to fundamentally change how ships are currently perceived. Right now, ship progression is linear. 
Once you can build a schooner, you never build a sloop again, and so on up the ladder. We are more focused on giving every ship type a viable role on the ocean and introducing strategy and reasons for each ship type to exist. Again guys, there's a lot of stuff I'd love to talk about, but I don't want to make this video too long. But yeah, I agree with the um, the idea of the tokens. It would definitely make things a lot worse. And um, yeah, the devs are 100% right with that. On the horizon, post-integration of the claim system, we'll be going back through all the content that's currently in the game and be making quality of life improvements and balance adjustments. We aren't very interested in nerfing things so much as bringing their fun factor way up. So we've got some questions on this. How far out are we from super wind sea highways that make traveling around the map faster and consolidate content we're trying to get it by the end of the year a lot depends on how long it takes to balance a trade system new ship system and new claim system by the end of the year they've got a lot of things they want done by the end of the year for a small team it's gonna be really interesting to see what we do and don't get next question any plans for expanding fishing so it doesn't suck so much like better random loot tables from fishing maybe getting maps randomly from fishing higher quality fishing pole better maps blueprints gold etc dev responded by saying we can answer this by saying that we don't think there is nearly enough fun stuff to do on the water and we are looking to blow that out significantly this will include water creature taming better fishing, ocean resource gathering, and better diving. Yeah, they mentioned water creeps tame in there, guys. Again, there's so much in this post. I'm going to link this down below as always, guys. Go read for it. There's some real interesting stuff in here. It's quite um, an eye-opener to what they're kind of thinking right now. And again, that is definitely something I want to talk about in another video um, because that's a lot to dive into right there. But great to hear it. I really do hope we get to see some more stuff like that. The next question, any plan changes for free ports, exponential decay or something to prevent free port living? Not yet. We have to put in all the systems that allow lone wolves and small groups to survive elsewhere first. Long term, we envision settlements of any kind to be more friendly or hostile to you depending on how you've treated them in the past. So that's sounding like we're going to get some NPC factions and I've been wondering if we'd ever get this in that game and I've always thought it'd be a massive um, addition to the game. I thought it'd be really cool personally. I know it's a PvE type of thing really but I do think that would be awesome um, and maybe you could join them for PvP so if you're a smaller company you could like become part of a faction rather than a giant company or something maybe. Um, it opens up a whole lot of possibilities if they do go along that line. So that's interesting. Can you tell us more about the ideas behind how breeding is envisioned by the dev team for beginner breeders through the most advanced breeders? Right now it takes too much time to do. Unless an entire weekend day is devoted to it, perhaps more difficulties while raising babies through their infant stages, but have it be for a much shorter duration so that it is more practical and enjoyable for a wider audience. Dev responded to that by saying, One of our designers has taken the breeding and taming of creatures under her wing. In the background, she's working on a completely revamped system that should be more of what you want to see. Can't tell you when it will ship, but I can tell you that we are working on it. That might be the greatest thing I've ever read <laughs> on a dev q and I hate the taming system. The Breeding's way too long-winded, and um, yeah, it's about time we got got some changes there. So that'll be interesting when we eventually get it. Next question: Treasure maps need a lot of work. Are big changes planned for the hunts to be more engaging? The distance requirement is also a negative map factor. It's not enjoyable to sail seven grids out, seven grids back to a run a masterwork map. Could maps that are any quality spawn on an island that are closer? Yes, a rework of this is planned, but it's down the road. It's not where we want it either, and for sure we are looking at the treasure spawning closer. Yeah, they've got a lot. There's already a lot. We're not even at the end yet, but there's already a lot of stuff they want to change and they are working on changing, and a lot of it they want to done. They want to get done by the end of this year. So, you know, we've got just over a month left. So, really interesting. Like I said, this is 
um, a really great post. Or at least I'm, I'm enjoying it. I think this is, like I said, there's a lot of cool information in here. Additional Q&A. What is some of the work that is currently being done to help with optimization and performance issues? This is a big talking point right now. Uh, the dev responded to this by saying about half our engineering staff is on performance and optimization. We know it's a problem and we are working to fix it. The issue is that we also want to continue to put the rest of the planned features in the game to see if they are viable. We want a high performance game as much as you do. Remember, optimization isn't going to suddenly happen in one patch. Some improvements may happen in small steps over time, while other improvements are a bigger engineering endeavor and may not be seen until we are further along. So, the, the, again, I'll just keep this brief, but I do want to mention here that this is going to be a massive issue because they've already got the game out, they're already building on the engine and everything they already had. Like, now's the time to fix it, and obviously, it sounds like they are working on it, and like they say, we won't necessarily see any of the fruits of that labor for some time yet but um the longer they leave it the harder it's going to be so i really do hope that that is true and that they are working on it right now because it needs to get better quickly um because like i said the, the more they add to it now the worse it's going to be in the future next question is the team still looking at ways for players to keep some progress free wipes Yes, we haven't figured out a balanced and scalable method yet, but we do want that. Adding a new global server structure with a trade system was the first step on this, and we'll keep working towards it. The challenge here is that the funnest part of a wipe for most people is that they are all on even footing again. Allowing players to retain progression may also allow them to maintain oppression. Yeah, 100%. When they wipe, it needs to be a wipe. And we need to accept that as a community. Um, what they need to do is let us know when they're going to wipe. Like At the moment, I'm, I'm not happy playing because we don't know when the next wipe's coming. Like, we have no idea. They, they've said there's going to be a wipe when the um, claim system is ready and when it's rolled out, which they want done by the end of the year, which obviously means December. But they haven't confirmed it, and we have no idea how far away the claim system is. That's the problem with the wipes um, for a lot of people, I think, more than anything. Um, I'm fine with wipes. I actually like when there's a wipe. I enjoy the start of the game most of the time. I didn't enjoy it this time around, but most of the time I do enjoy it. But only when I know that I'm going to be putting effort into something that will be around for a few months. I don't want to put effort in for a few weeks, especially on normal rates. So I think that's the bigger problem there. It's the, it's the um, uncertainty rather than the progression. They're 100% right there. We can't have wipes where people carry stuff over. Um, I know a lot of, uh, a f I know a few people would like that, but at the end of the day, you, it's not gonna benefit you like you think, because you gotta remember the, the big companies that run wild over everyone will also <laughs> carry progression over. So you won't be no better off. In fact, you'll probably be worse off. So that's that's um, a good response in my opinion. Next question. Can we please get a HUD indicator once a ship is protected by the new ship house structure? The green text popping up once the anchor is down is not such a great indicator. They said they totally agree that this is a bit confusing. A complete UI revamp is on the schedule and this item is part of that. So we can expect a new UI. That's kind of cool. Interested to see what that will come out as. Next one. This is nitpicking, but can handling sales trim opposite to how they do now? It is backwards to real world physics. Okay, we'll look into it with a smiley face that they said there. Uh, that's the kind of thing, and I agree, it'd be nice to get things that accurate, but um, that's not going to happen soon, and I'd rather they focus on getting the game stable and giving us content. You know, that sort of thing they can change later on, I'd imagine. But um, <laughs> great point, I'm glad they picked that one up, that's funny. Next one, teleporting bed to bed and killing yourself to respawn on lawless islands for discovery points is one of the lamest things I have to do in this game. Will other features be looked at for discovery points that are more interesting? Um, and they said, in short, yes, we agree that killing yourself and bed teleporting is lame. We all want to fix that and give you more ways to travel the world more quickly. Now, just quickly, guys, that's you doing that. <laughs> and I do it as well, but don't complain about it. You don't have to do that. You can jump on your ship 
and sail the seas and discover everything if you want to. I mean, you don't have to kill yourself and jump to a bed. Um, you know, it, it's a part of the game because you can place beds down and people use it to do that. But um, yeah, I'd love to see him obviously improve the way we sail around and all that kind of stuff. I get that, but but yeah, that's that's us rather than them, the teleporting thing. <laughs> Although the teleporting to bed to bed right now doesn't even, even work. There's a lot of issues with um, bed spawning for some people. And the last question, will we be able to have the fog of war back? We had it early in the game, but it could be cheated by sharing game files and so it was removed. The thrill of exploration was exciting for many players. As things stand at the moment, you just always have the full map explored. It's something we hadn't thought about. We'll look into this idea. So yeah, they had to remove it because obviously if some people had it and some people didn't on PvP, they've got a massive advantage, right? That's fair enough. Um, in PvE, I guess it wouldn't really matter. It's only you losing out if you have the full map, like if, or not necessarily losing out if you don't want to do it, like go and uncover everything. Some people like to uncover everything. I actually like the fog of war because I could see where I've been when I'm trying to do my discovery points. It was nice and easy to remember where I'd been. I didn't have to like continuously do it in like one go. I could just like go, oh yeah, that's where I was before and carry on kind of thing. I know it, you don't need that to um, remember, but it was nice. It was nice to see your progression of discovery kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, again, like the um, handling sale question, that's something they would do later, I'd imagine. You know, there's a lot more things in front of that on the priorities. So um, yeah, and then the final note, as always, that you know, Atlas is early access. Things will change. Yada yada yada. Um, yeah, great post. Really, really interesting. A lot of information in there, like a lot, uh, a lot to talk about. Leave your comments down below and let me know what you think to the stuff in there. And um, yeah, I like I said a million times, I love reading it and responding to it and talking to you guys about things. And remember, it's opinions, guys. Like it, none of it's you know written in stone. It's just opinions. Everyone's entitled to their own opinions, so don't go crapping on each other. You know, just uh, chat. It's interesting to see what other people think. And, you know, the devs might read that stuff and take ideas from it. So it is worth doing, I think. I'd like to think. And um, it's fun. It's fun. Talking about the game we love. Why not? Um, I'm going to leave it there, guys. Like I said, this was such a big post. There's a lot of information in there. Um, I will do other videos on this. Like, we'll take some stuff out and talk about it so it's broken down and easier to digest. But, yeah, that was the post. And, like I said, really interesting. I'm super happy with a lot that they've said in there, especially like the taming system mentioned. So yeah, love to know what you guys think. Don't forget if you enjoyed the video or if it's helpful, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, all that good stuff for videos and live streams and things like that. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.